Welcome. It's the 19th of July, 2024. This is Jenkins Documentation Office Hours. Uh, today's agenda, Google Summer of Code, Contributor Spotlight, uh, Version Docs Project, in case there's anything you want to share there, Chris, and 2.426.1 LTS. Any other topics we need to put on the agenda? Mm, don't think so. Okay, so let's talk about Google Summer of Code projects first. And the one that I was most wanting to show here, see and show here was the InfraStats project. So here is new.stats.jenkins.io. And uh, the navigation is, is really sweet. It, it works just great. So the one that I've been tracking recently is JVMs. How are we doing at getting people off of Java 11, off of Java 8, and on to Java 17? If you look at the graph here, it shows us that we've got 95,000 installations on Java 17, and that's an improvement from the last data point of 4,000 installations. And our number of Java 11 installations is dropping, as is the continued decrease of Java 8. So people are upgrading, and we're getting onto, onto more current Java versions. And Java 21 likewise continues. Now the new data, the next data point won't be available if I understand correctly until the end of the month of July and it will show the month, the July month's data. Now, Chris, were there other things that you wanted to highlight? I think we've got a new feature here on the, the plugin pull request. What would you like me to show? Yep. So if you go to stats in detail. Okay, stats in detail. You just can see like the plugin um, symbol and the set, like a, a little bit towards the center, like right below. Oh, like, there. Okay. Yeah. So you can click on that. So to the left hand side, so you can see compare. Oh, uh, keep, keep that on maybe. Oh, I want it enabled. Okay. Like, okay. So that, but then I do compare. Um, oh, okay. So I can now compare monthly Jen Jenkins installations over time and look for, so what it's, what it's doing is it's showing on the left-hand axis, the plugin number, yep. and on the right-hand axis, the Jenkins controllers number. So in this case, I can see a, a, a what to me is a clear correlation between, between the number of Jenkins controllers, and that's the, the sort of, bluish or purple color and the number of Jenkins plugins installed. Oh, and it's scaled. Okay. So, I mean, the, the scales are completely different, right? 31 million plugin installs, but they are tracking very reasonably with the number of, of Jenkins installations. Cool. So, and if we look at agent growth, same thing. All right. They, we see, we see the two, side by side, we can see in parallel, okay, we've got roughly one and a half, or okay, 1.2 million agents and the plugin install count, or if, okay, so if I do this same thing, Chris, if I go to Jenkins, now it's got Jenkins and agents on the same graph. Yep. Oh, that's, that's very nice. Yeah, so I think you'd like it too. Cool, thank you. So uh, this, this, this is just amazing. So give us a hint and I can refresh, download it as a, as an image. Is that what it downloads? So it saves the S SVG. I'm not sure we, we will show for the download image. So. Interesting. Okay. And then the CSV data is available. Nice. So we need to patch some bugs here for download. Well, but, but that's, that's a beautiful, this is absolutely wonderful. So data going all the way back to 2008, all the way forward to 2024. So we've got 16, almost 17 years of data there that we've been gathering to show, hey, how is this working? And then if I want to switch back here, are the Jenkins installations. Wow. I think the best, the best case is like, we should disable the download button when we have two plots. Because everything is... Oh, oh, okay, right. Because the download, all right, the download there, now this, 
Oh, yeah. Still. Well, but and and no worry. I mean, truthfully, if I want to do something with this graph, I can either screenshot it or I can I can download the CSV and load it into Excel if I really need to do exotic things with the graphics data. That's that's very, very nice. And now does the the monthly data still still show up as nicely? I think so. Yeah, if you try it, it's still there. Oh, look at that. It does. Okay. And I've still got the slider that lets me narrow the region that I'm looking at. I still have to go do research to understand what this sort of cliff is. I think there's some difference between instance identity and authentication tokens that causes a 40,000 installation difference in that. Maybe these on the right are all bundled with Jenkins or something. To, it's interesting, nice, nice, nice graphs. And right. now plug, yeah, so this is total plugin installations. And this is the one that, that look at that. Oh, that's, that is, that is really elegant. Very, very nice. So the, it clearly shows the long tail of plugins that have very few installations. And then as we, as we get, oops, let's switch. As we get off this long tail, we have proceeding when we get to 50,000 plugins, we get a hint. So 50,000 installations that already hints to us, look at how tiny that bar is. What's that? Maybe 10%. So 200 or 250 plugins are the ones that are installed 50,000 or more times. Yep. That That is elegant, Chris. Thank you. Thanks for leading that project. And thanks to Shlomo for, for Shlomo's work and making it happen. Yeah, you did a good job. Excellent. Anything else you'd like to highlight here? Um, no. Okay. Let's continue with, with our other topics then. Thanks very much. So Contributor Spotlight has been published. Uh, special thanks to Alyssa Tong, to Bruno Verachten, and others who assembled the, the, in, the information about Marcus. Marcus works for SAP, and he manages a large set of Jenkins installations for SAP. And so he's incented, he's motivated to contribute to Jenkins because it helps him do his day job. And then Chris, I have to, I still have to show this one. Thanks very much for doing this. Oh, okay. Okay. The thank you, the thank you page. Now this one was a little surprising. The bot, I think in general you filter out bots, but this one isn't obviously a bot until you look at the name. Yeah. But very, very, very nice work. Thanks a bunch for doing that. And thanks for Jean-Marc too. Yes, yes, absolutely. All right, and we're looking forward to the next Contributor Spotlight. Uh, we hope a future one will be about Darren Pope, and we're looking for volunteers that can help write the next several. So we've got Kevin. Kevin Martins is out of office with an illness. He's had surgery, and so we're, we're trying to fill in while he's out. The, the version docs project. Anything you want to say about version docs, Chris? Um, we are currently like putting the um, update on hold because like uh, Kevin is away, so like um, there's no one to review the pull request, even though it's there. So like, I think the one from early July, late May, it's still in review. So I'll wait if that one's merged first before I'll continue with um the updates. Great, thank you. So, so you're you'd you'd be more than happy to have reviews, but there's no point in merging new uh, unless we've got reviews of the current. Yep. Thank you. Yeah, and I apologize. I just don't have capacity right now to do the reviews of that site. I've got to keep my focus on Spring Security. Okay. All right. Anything else on version docs? Um. Nope. Okay, next one and the last one for our time today, 
the 2.426.1 changelog is available for review. Uh, thanks for the invitation, Chris, to, to take on the release lead. I am the release lead for the next LTS. And here's the changelog. The release candidate will be available next week. Oh, oh, and I've got additional news. Um, Jeremy Playout will be shadowing Mark as the 2.426.1 release lead. So the hope is add him as a release lead in the future. Okay. So he and I are working together on it. I'll show him the steps. I've already introduced the checklist to him. And that way we get more people who can act as release leads. Yep. So the, the change log is here. It's visible as a screenshot. Has three, three items in the upgrade guide. Uh, none of the three are particularly concerning. The top one is that some plugins that depended on Apache Commons file upload need to be updated to use the new version. And they're listed here, two of them. One already has the fix released. The other one doesn't have a fix released. And if users need that plugin, they need to wait and not upgrade to 462.1. That's all that I had, Chris. Anything else from you? Mm, nope. Okay, well, let's call ourselves done for today then. Thanks very much. Thank you, Mark. We'll be back in a week.